Hello everyone, welcome to lab 2 experiment. This is a section of machine health monitoring. Today we will have experiment number 4 which is shaft balancing and bearing faults. So the basic objective of this experiment is to study the importance of the shaft balancing and bearing faults in order to avoid undesirable vibrations. So if we have a system and we have the unbalanced mass masses in the system that will cause vibrations same thing will happen for the bearing faults so in order to avoid that uh, those problems we need to check for mass balancing and bearing faults and this experiment will help us and un uh, understand the basics of how we can do that so in general as a theory this is a system example of a mechanical system we have a motor this motor will change the electrical power into mechanical power through rotation of this shaft we may have one coupling to couple the motor power to some gearbox for example or any mechanical elements and same thing again we have some connections between the gearbox and other device a turbine or fan or any system so rotary systems they are connected so any small changing in the axis if the axis of the shaft is not perfectly matches with the axis of the gearbox for example this eccentricity will cause unbalance in the system or in any case we have small masses added uh, in one element or some masses taken have been taken from the system will cause also the unbalance system so as you mentioned earlier if we want to speak about the unbalancing unbalance is caused by the displacement of the mass center line from the rotor's axis by an eccentricity in the distribution of the rotor mass. Strong radial vibrations of the fundamental frequency will be caused by the unbalance. Another thing is unbalances can result in excessive bearing wear, fatigue in the support structures, decreased product quality and power losses in the system. So there is some measures and standards through them we can determine the acceptance limits of unbalance. Those factors and parameters depends on the speed of the machinery. For some machines with low speed we have some standard or in case of high speed we also have different standard. Type and size of the machine, expected service of the machine and mounting systems. There is one table in this table we can see the range of vibrations velocity millimeter per second is starting from 0 0.28 0 0.45 up to 45 and we have the size of the machines power up to 15 kilowatt class a example we have a machine 8 kilowatt that means it should be in this column the class a vibration if we measure a vibration velocity of 0.28 up to 0.71 that means the machine is in class 1 which and standard A. A is good so everything is acceptable. If the velocity of vibration is increased up to 0.12 or 1.8 we are now in stage B satisfactory. If it's increased more than that 2.8 4.5 it will be C unsatisfactory and D higher values starting from 7.1 up to 45 it is acceptable but it's not good as A, B and C more than that for this range of power is not acceptable same thing with higher powers 15 to 75 we see that the range is increased and for engines or machines with more than 75 kilowatt and you see everything from here until 2.8 is class A and stage D start from 28 so it depends on the power and size of the machine each one has a specific value of vibration velocity how to cure balancing how to cure the imbalancing or how we do balancing basically it depends on the the neutral axis of the system so originally this axis of rotation it should be in the middle or in the center because of this unbalanced mass, the axis of rotation is shifted to is shifted toward the mass. So we need to take this axis back, and of course we need to add another mass in this area. 
so that the system will be in balance and this axis of rotation will return back to the original position in case if we have more than one balance for example balance, imbalance mass 1 and balance mass 2 the axis of rotation the new one will be the principal axis of inertia will be this inclined uh, axis in order to cure that we should add one mass in this position and another mass at that position so that we take it back to this uh, the original axis of rotation for bearing we know that bearings may fail because of the manufacturing errors the improper assembly loading operations lubrications and other uh, harsh environment so the bearing faults will be generated in some element of the bearing itself so maybe we have some error or some uh, problems with the outer rays or inner rays or the ball spin itself or the fundamental train frequency so this is the four types of frequency or faults appearing on bearings so BPFO is for pass ball passing frequency outer rays if we found that value in our frequency data this is an indicator on fault on outer rays inner rays or other other kinds so we can calculate those frequencies the frequencies the four frequencies we can calculate them and we also can measure them through our experiment by today if you want theoretically to calculate the values this figure shows the locations of each frequency so outer rays inner rays or ball or cage and these are formulas for calculating the frequencies the all formulas they are depending on the small n value n is the number of rotations a number of balls sorry fr is the relative revolution per second uh, bd and pd they are the pitch diameter and ball diameters beta is the contact angle and n is number of balls so easily we can calculate based on our speed and diameters the specifications of the bearing we can determine the four frequencies or i mentioned earlier we can measure them by experiment today there is one important factor called crest factor which is the ratio between the peak and rms values of vibration so if you look at this figure we can see the initial peak value and the initial rms value and with time we can see that there is some deviation because in the first stage this ratio or the distance between them is fixed and constant this is indication of a good bearing or high quality bearing but after some time we see this deviation and this crest factor the ratio between the peak and rms is increasing and this is an indication of peaks grows as fault grows so crest factor is used to uh, detect faults in bearings by calculating the peak value and rms values so let's go and perform our experiment so if you want to start the shaft balancing experiment uh, step number one select the balancing tab and before that this is the software machine health monitoring if i go to run experiments it's, uh, experiment number four shaft balancing and bearing faults so i have two sections one for balancing and the other one for bearings for now we will do the balancing experiment good step number two select the frequency response tab we don't want to see the saved data it's empty because we did nothing after now so frequency response now it increases the speed of the motor by adjusting the knob of the controller to 4000 rpm now i need to run the machine the machine on a speed of 4000 if you look at here this is the speed controller and let me just run the machine first so now the machine is running with 4000 k uh, 4000 rpm sorry and we can see that the disc is rotating because of the dc motor and we have a speed measurement device this light so it counts number of revolutions then one rotation and then we'll get the rpm and this is a sensor for, for measuring the vibration it's mounted on the bearing we have two bearings of the the shaft mounting the shaft good so if we look at the screen with, with 4000 rpm 
we can see that we have an, and the frequency is we have at fi at 50 we have some peak and all almost the rest is zero we don't have any frequency only one peak at 50 as this uh, indicator this line the yellow line shows the frequency number it's 50 basically what we are doing we will uh, stop the machine okay step number that before we stop the machine step number uh, nine we need to, to increase the speed up to 6000 rpm to see the effect of high speed on the frequency of the system so i will increase the speed and you can see that we have the frequency is increasing and we have more beats down the speed is zero so we don't have any frequency so this will be the first section now we will we need to add for the balancing experiment we need to add from this screw set we need to add at least one element into the system this is the disk so it's it's already balanced now because everything is simil similar symmetric if if i add small element in here That means this disk now is not similar, is not symmetric because the added small mass it will make or create an unbalance in the system, and you want to see the effect of that in the response of the system frequency and amplitude. So this unbalance in this experiment, intentionally we did this unbalance, but normally there is some some problem with the system that caused the unbalance because of eccentric, for example, between the shaft elements and couplings. Or other, or other causes so let's see the, the response when we add this small mass to create the end balance same thing we will do the speed let's just do it one time at 6000 rpm and, we, and at the end we will compare the results between no unbalance with one screw and the normal case so as you see here because the speed is zero if i increase the speed up to 6000 we will be we'll be seeing more peaks and frequencies with higher amplitudes so this is the speed at 6000 and high amplitudes we have the results you can compare them together graph a without any an unbalanced mass and graph b with only one mass added the last section will be how to cure this how we can uh, delete that effect of unbalance we can do the balancing effect so we add another mass similar weight in the other side so if this is bolt a or screw number A I cannot do it in this place or that place so it should be balanced because I need to have the disc under balanced ways so no effect of the first screw this one the second screw will cancel the effect of the first one so now technically the disc is similar to the case of no screws at all which is balanced balanced now let's compare the result now we expect that to see the result the first one we got without adding as without adding any screw so let's do that and compare the results let's do the speed up to 6000 same thing I will just send the system. One frequency in here, 
we don't have other peaks same as that case and remember that it's not 100% similar to the first one because still we have some differences because the two screws but at the end 90% or more than that we have the same response similar to the case of no balance and no screws at all okay so I will do the experiment again without uh, and being concentrating only on the screen so you can capture the results perfectly the procedures will be running the experiment so uh, we have our program machine health monitoring trainer and we can click on experiment number four shaft balancing and beating faults so if i go it's already open quit if i go to this machine health monitoring double click La run experiments so experiment number four shaft balancing and bearing faults um, we have two tabs one for balancing and one for bearing for now we are in the balancing experiment and remember that since we are dealing with machine today important notes uh, use the emergency button if you feel something is getting out of control make sure to close the cover before starting the trainer it's for safety and make sure that there are no screws attached to the disc before you turn the trainer on and never increase the, sh the shaft speed to more than 10,000 rpm so if you want to start the shaft balancing experiment select the, bearing, the balancing tab and select the frequency response so we have it in here this is the balancing tab and this is frequency response increase the speed of the motor by adjusting the knob of the controller to 4000 rpm and then increase up to the speed of 6 rpm and observe the power spectrum in both cases and record your observation draw the power spectrum in the chart below so basically the objective is to check the effect of high speed 4000 versus 6000 rpm if i run this is the power spectrum it's already there is no need to draw them manually if we save data if we can save data you will find that the chart are given in the excel file so i will run the machine in for for uh, so i will run the machine with 4000 rpm and i give you a chance to look at the graph and then again i will do the text 6000 rpm and same thing you can capture uh, or take a screenshot of the graphs so this is 4000 as you see we have only small one frequency at 50 we can look at the screen or we can see that it is here 45.3 the exact value and we have a speed of uh, almost 3000 rpm good so this is almost 4000 rpm and you can see that we have only one peak at this level now let me increase the speed up to 6000 rpm so high speed so you can see you can see the peaks the changes in the peaks between 4000 rpm and 6000 rpm so you'll be able to uh, record your observations in here now we need to check 
and see the effect of unbalance so basically in our system we will add one screw in here so if I go and add one screw and again if I want to look at the balancing tab and run the machine with 4000 RPM so we can see that will have one frequency 86 87 compared to the 45 frequency in last case and we have multiple frequencies appearing in here one two three four five so we have higher frequency the same system the same speed almost 4000 but we have different frequencies appearing to us and this is the effect of um, uh, the imbalance of the system because of the small element that I have done if I do high speed the effect is increasing so we can see we can clearly see the effect of um, adding small element as causing of the imbalance in the system now let us remove that effect by adding another screw into our system in the disk so I will add the other screw now we should get the pure graph similar to the case of no screws good so if I run the machine now same speed 4000 rpm it's almost similar to the first case we cannot see any beaks in here this is 440 47 and you can see that the frequency is close to the original frequency it was I think about 50 or something but you can compare now the results between the case of no screw and the case of balanced two screws and we can compare them to the case of we have only one screw causing imbalance in the system good so this is the end of the section of unbalancing we can put our graphs we can take screenshot from this result and put them in our report if you want good so now let's do the second part for bearings yes for bearing experiment procedure same thing we need to run the machine and select bearing tab instead of balancing so if I go back to the software and return this is the experiment for shaft balancing and bearing faults I will do the bearing section in here so we will have the, f the same response for amplitude and frequencies and increase the speed of this the motor up to 6000 rpm and calculate the fundamental frequency so if I run the speed if I run the machine with 6000 rpm I will be able to see the frequency in the graph so this is the machine we can look at the graphs or we can see the frequency in here for comparison and checking the value we can we can 
and checking the value that we can see compared to the exact value so the speed is almost 6000 rpm and we have one fundamental frequency and other small values of frequencies the fundamental frequency is 113 if I go back to the manual so theoretically we need to calculate the bearing frequencies the four frequencies indicating the bearing fault in outer race inner race or the ball or cage itself as we explained earlier so given that number of balls is seven contact angle is zero beach diameter is 18 and ball diameter is seven millimeters you have the values you can theoretically calculate one two three four values of elements of bearing now we need to run the machine this the experiment and show cursor in order to compare our theoretical values with the experimental values or measured values now or automatically those uh, those values of frequencies are recorded if we show cursor we'll be able to show those values so this is one frequency two three and four frequencies compared to the fundamental frequency the red one which is almost 110 in here so this is 570 570 almost 580 so you can compare your value you can compare theoretical value with measured value in here good now let's go for the bearing trend tab to measure the crest factor by measuring the peak value and rms value and calculating the crest factor so bearing trend and run the system as you see we have one fixed value for peak value which is 90 and one value for rms value which is almost nine the red line for rms the white color is for the peak value so we have a constant we have a constant ratio and this is a good indication if we remember what if you remember what we spoke about in the crisp factor chart so this is a good in, an indication of a good um, bearing so you need to go and answer those questions and this will be the end of experiments for today and thank you very much